Amir, do you want to do a warm up for everybody so everybody can keep up with like 10 minutes warm up? So are you guys ready? Who's ready to move? Yeah, let's go, Amir. Let's Push uh, the stand, up. take it out a little bit. Come on, guys, some energy here. Everybody doing it. Let me see who's Don't in shape it. during this time, Amir. Let me see who's in shape. I want to check it out. I'm going to watch you here. I just finished a one hour workout with Kathy. We did a little bit of conditioning. So let me see for our, everybody here who's actually doing something or just like watching Netflix. <laughs> okay, guys, let's get started. Let's get started. We have a special guest today. It's very exciting. Let's get going. Hand your hips. Circle with your head. Rotation. Let's go. Move it up. Let's go. Get out of the couch. Come on. Let's go, guys. Side. Go. Side. Side. Shoulders. Professor's watching you. Let's go. There we go. <laughs> Don't do this if you're driving. Don't do it if you're driving. Very dangerous. Other way. Good. Let's twist. Full body. Joshua's phone? Joshua, is you're in blank. I cannot see if you're working out or not. Botero, Lucas, I want to see you working out. Enzo, I want to see you doing the work. Laura, I want to see you working out. Max, vamos lá, let's go. Reverse. Oh, we're gonna, Good. whoever's not doing the workout, I'm, well, he's gonna have a surprise. Oh, yeah, baby, that's what's up. Uh-oh. Enzo, I'm not seeing you working uh, out. Jumping jack. Go. Oh, Enzo, it's right here. Oh, man, yes, you're going to be on a, a Brazilian scholar dancing summer school. Laura, I don't see you working out. Oh, Mr. Rick, what's going on? You, you become like a, a goose to like sitting side to side. What's up? What's up? Where's my jumping jacks, Mr. Rick? Huh? Let's be ready right. when this whole thing passes so that way you're not going to be behind. Oh, uh, well, I'm going to be I'm going to be doing sprints when you guys are resting. Ah, <laughs> I want to see the Boca Negra. <laughs> Franz Vargas, Pedro Ventura, let's go, Ben Damio. Vamos. I see a lot of people on the Pull your heels in the butterfly position. KC, I'm calling everybody out. I don't care. All right. Right again, left leg out, leg in, left leg out. Reach forward. Alex Pais, my boy. Oh. What's up, doctor? Thank you for your you. Thank you for being the front line, my man. Let me see here. I see at least Other like side. 10 people right. that are not doing anything. And Team Lai, I want to see you. Franz Vargas. Other side, side guy. Right leg. Like. What's up? Huh? Let me see here. Okay, now. Right, circles. What are we going to do? Give an example, guys. Huh? Let's put an example, a good one. Whoever didn't do a workout today, whoever didn't do nothing, move your body. Uh huh. Trim. 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 Come on, Brandon. Work it now. Let's go, Brandon. Yes. Hey, Jumping jack. Come on. Up. Get out of the chair. Let's go. Laura, Pedro, Pura, Lisa. Don't come with the fake picture that you're driving because I'm not going to fall into that, okay? Yeah, don't come with that. Oh, I'm driving. I'm driving. Look at my background. Yeah, I'm right I'm here. Into that. Uh huh. No. Yeah. Yeah. Michael yeah. Robbie, fired let's up. go. Boca Negra. Stop eating, stop eating Brazilian food in San Francisco. Boca Negra. San Francisco is very nice, but let's go and work out here. Pass the hand on the face. You have the hand sitting down in the chair? Jack. Oh, man. No. No, I'll throw out. Oh, I'm taking some notes, eh? Taking some notes, whoever's not working out. Boca Negra, nice hair, but look. Long hair, don't care, baby. Go. Talk to Oscar. I know you're a very good wrestler, but come on. Give an example for your workouts, huh? All right. Upper stretch. Oh, stretch. Easy. Wow, I'm here to take it easy on you guys, eh? Joven is going to love you. And I know half of you guys on the Instagram watch. Get off of Instagram. Don't come with that. Oh, no. I'm busy here. Joven, you have tears in your eyes. Don't All cry right, last me, one. Argentina. Uh-huh. Last one, guys. Pick it up. Sports United High Oh, Boca Negra. All the way from San Francisco. Boca Negra. Vamos lá. 
Mr. Rick, you're still in the same position? What's up? Mr. No, go water, Mr. Rick. Get out. Bravo, move. 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 I see two pictures. I don't know what that is. Nice roofing. Okay, job, guys. All yours, Professor. All right, guys. Uh, good job. Listen, this is just like a, a way to, to play with you guys, you know, so we can keep it up. Remember, got to be proactive. You got to stay active. You know, trust me, not even a thunderstorm land on us every single day okay this is gonna pass but let's be prepared when this whole thing pass we're gonna be ready don't wait for okay i'm gonna wait for this pass and then i'm gonna be ready no be ready right now so ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for everybody showing up today it's my great great pleasure to introduce you like you, you guys you guys probably like went to online and you see like her her amazing titles Mrs. Claudia Duval. Claudinha, tá aí? Manda um alô aí pra galera. Hi, guys. Uh, I, I'm not sure how this works. I see all of you guys. I'm not sure you see me. If you, if you click the, the speaker view or gallery view at the top right, Claudia, you'll be able to see okay. I'm on my phone. I'm not on the... Um, There's two views you can choose from. I don't know. Uh, There's a speaker view. Phone and the gallery view. So they can all see you. I have it turned on, so go ahead and talk. They can Tom, see you. Tom, can you hear me? Go to the right. Okay, so all you guys see me, right? Os. Okay. Hey, somebody playing guitar or some sort of a music on the background? Come on, really? Guys, try to keep your phone, your, your thing muted, except for the speaker, if at all possible. Okay? Um, I'll try and keep a monitor on that, but... We'll oh, Tom, boa, Tom, boa, boa. Oh, you're looking good, Sajel. Okay, Claudia, I saw you. <laughs> okay, guys, so this is my great friend, Milena. Uh, she agreed to help us with uh, today's technique. So, can you guys see well from here? I don't have a really good equipment, so I tried my best to make it a, a good view. Everybody can see well from here? Yes, perfect. I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume it's a yes. So I'm gonna show uh, an arm bar I like to use a lot from the side control. Let me let me see my own video just to make sure it's a good. Let me just try and make it. Okay. Professor Tom, if you could, uh, Professor Tom, if you could, everybody except for her, so the screen doesn't. Okay. So we're here sometimes, and side control. Uh, obviously, the person underneath is going to be trying to escape using all means. So, this one technique that I like to do is like usually they're pushing you right here. So, I, what I start doing is I start, um, you know, allowing them to make the move, like even pushing my body side. But at the same time, I always have my hand here right behind her elbow. So, as soon as you start pushing me, I'm gonna have my hand go over the elbow and then come right here. So both my hands are gonna be holding her wrist like this, so her tongue has to be pointing towards the floor. Then I have my uh, armpit right over like her tricep. And then through here, I'm just gonna put my weight down a little bit. And then this one, I'm gonna bring up right here. So once again, here, Side control, so obviously my opponent is trying to leave, so she's gonna start pushing me, so I'm, I'm gonna allow the movement to happen, and as she's pushing me, this hand is gonna start going over, and then I'm gonna hold her wrist with both my hands here. I'm gonna weigh down on top of her shoulder, and then this one I'm gonna bring up. 
Hey guys, did you see well? Everybody was able to understand? Guys? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's just that our phones are in mute, so that our, we don't need to run. Wait. Oh. Somebody said no. So, uh, Luke. So, Luke, weren't you able to understand, or you couldn't see what happened? Guys. Uh, I think everybody's muted. I'm not sure why it's okay. muted. Okay. So yeah, I if need everybody, to... everybody's going to be muted. So you're going to have to uh, just wrote that he up, couldn't see. Like that. Otherwise, you see what happens as soon as people unmute okay, us. Okay. Um, it goes crazy. Okay. So Luke said he couldn't see. see but, uh, yes, it's the I am not the gymnastics. Unmute everybody. <laughs> So if you need to unmute, you can unmute yourself, but then right away, mute yourself back, please, just so that we don't hear background noise and stuff like that. So, uh, Claudia, I'm going to unmute you if, you if you need to. Tommy, Tommy, okay, I, so, I suggest in the okay. chat, I suggest in the chat, whoever like wrote, uh, writes his name, that's the person who, who is going to talk first because it's going to be crazy. No, okay, you guys can write because I see your messages here. So people that said that you couldn't see what happened. Was it the position not good or you want me to change the side or, or the, the position of the phone? Can I ask you, can you a write question? Your... Yeah, because uh, some people said they couldn't see. But, can, I, uh, can I ask you a question? Please show one more time. Okay, I'm going to show one more time, but uh, just let me know like what's... Why are you guys not able to see what's happening? Okay. So again, so for side control, what happens is uh, my opponent obviously is going to be trying to push me away. So what I'm going to do is slowly I'm going to allow her to move me away. But as she's moving me, what I'm going to do is as she's moving me to the other side, and this hand is going to start going over the arm. So through here, I'm in side control. She's gonna say, I'm gonna allow this movement to happen and then this arm is gonna go on top. And then both my hands are gonna be holding her wrist. I have my armpit right on top of her tricep right here. And then I'm gonna weigh myself down here on top of her tricep and then this one, I'm gonna bring up right here. Okay, guys, were you able to see this time? Are you pulling with your left arm on the wrist? Uh, so both my hands are gonna be holding her wrist like this. And then my armpit is right on top of her shoulder. So this one is gonna weigh down and this one is gonna bring up. Okay, guys. So let me try and see. Thank you. Okay, let me see if I can see all of you guys doing it. My phone was on my skate, but just and I was able to see your legs now. Okay. Awesome, that's a new one for me. Thanks. Maybe they're gonna have a lot of questions for me today. Okay. I wonder if it was Kyle. Eu acho que fazer pergunta. What? are the key things you are looking for as you are setting this up. 
So the thing about this technique, like I said, you have the side control, which is a very good position, but uh, sometimes you can't go forward from there because the person is really pushing you off. So when you realize that you're not gonna be able to mount or, uh, or do something else from there, you're gonna allow the person to do the move, but you're following the arm as you go. Because obviously, if I'm on side control, if I can go for the mount or the finish right there, it's better. But you have the person pushing you off. You see that you're about to lose the position. So you just follow their move. But don't forget to make your arm, you know, like very, um, don't lose contact from your arm to then. And then you go for the, for the finish. Would you please be able to demonstrate one more time? Yes. Thank you. So right here, I have her on side control. So like I said, side control is a very good position, but sometimes you have a person that has a, you know, a very good defense or very strong and they're pushing you off. You see you're about to lose the position. Uh, if you do nothing about it, you're just going to recover guard, eventually end up attacking you. So I want to take advantage of this to go for the, uh, for the finish. So she's pushing me off. I'm going to allow this move to happen. But at the same time that I'm allowing this to happen, this arm is going to go, you see, very, I'm not going to lose contact with her arm. So I'm not going to come like this. I'm going to, you know, here, following her move. And then from here, I'm gonna end up here. So both hands like this, pushing this Excuse one up. Excuse me, one second. Are you ending up with your ribs on the elbow or are you going kind of more on the tricep? No, so my armpit is right here on her tricep. So here, right here. Okay, thank the you. So. So from here, she's pushing me, and then this one right here. So I'm gonna end up like this. So my armpit right here on the tricep. Yeah, the problem Thank you. Is there a way I can see the, all the messages that people type? Because some people are typing and I couldn't see you. Professor, from... uh, I, will, I, will, I will relay the messages to you. Uh, we have a question okay. now. They're wondering if you want the thumb up or thumb down. Of down, the arm. down. Yeah, her arm is going to be down, so the thumb is down. Perfect, perfect. Claudia, just want to say thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Uh, that's a conversation that we have last year. Uh, I know the schedule is a little bit crazy and that back then, but I just want to keep you in mind that your presence in Miami is a must. Yes, for sure, definitely. I want to go there. It's one place I haven't seen yet and I really want to go. Okay, we're going to go on a boat, we're going to go fish, and we're going to fight with alligators. Are you okay with that? Uh, yeah, totally, yeah, fine. All right, <laughs> sounds good. We just want to make question. sure, you know, fighting with alligators and stuff like that, you know, snakes, pythons. Yeah, I, I've heard rumors about Florida. It's, it's, it, 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 it is an interesting place. But then in Colorado, you can fight with the bears, you know. Oh, yeah, that yeah. sounds they're amazing. All over, they're they're <laughs> all over around Tom's backyard, so... Sometimes to the like trash can outside, we, we can kind of like have to look in around, you know what I mean? So eventually you got to take them down. <laughs> True. Professor, we have another question for you, please. If uh, once you start executing the arm bar, they start pushing away or pulling their elbow out, what would you transition to? Uh, the thing is, the position is very tight. So uh, it's very hard to take the arm out from there. Uh, the people that are practicing the technique, uh, you can try, like once you're going there, it's really hard to pull the arm out. Uh, let me try and like show. So what is it for pulling the arm out? So here, like I said, you have to make it very tight 
so they don't give the space for them to take the arm out. So that as the switches start pushing me, I have this one like right on top of it. So it's hard to take the elbow out because um, obviously, I mean, um, the person is trying to take you off. They're not expecting it. Like this position, I, I get a lot of people by surprise because they never expect something like this from there. So the only concern here is to move out. So usually, I'm not saying all the time, usually once they see what's happening is too late. So like here, and then they, they, they want to push you out. They're like, oh yes, I'm free. And I'm like, oh yes, I'm free. And then it's already too late. So usually they don't really have the time to put, bring the air, elbow out. And it's uh, also very tight. So don't, they don't usually get to take the arm out. Perfect. So as long as you're high enough on the uh, tricep and you're pulling up on the wrist, we should be good. Uh, another no, no, and it's not it's not about being high enough you, you got to be very tight so at, at, as soon as they start turning you got to move with them because like i said their only concern is to escape escape the, the side control so they don't really um so most of the time when i uh get people on this they don't really they don't they don't realize that this is about to to happen it's very sneaky yes Another student's asking, you're saying you're very famous for your wrist locks. Do you have any wrist locks from there? Uh, I didn't know what's famous for the <laughs> wrist locks. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you could go for the wrist lock, but uh, I don't see why it would be necessary. Uh, so like, uh, I mean, you could definitely go for the wrist lock, but I don't see I don't see it as necessary. I think you would be wasting time, like leaving a good position here to go for the wrist lock because this is very tight. The way I usually do wrist locks is I'm trying another position and that position is not working, then I go for the wrist lock. So for example, I'm trying an arm bar, they're defending, then I go for the wrist lock. I'm trying a triangle, they're defending, then I go for the wrist lock. But this position, I don't see how the wrist locks would be, you know, more effect. I guess maybe, I guess maybe like what could happen is if she's trying to take the el elbow out, I could like use both here, but I, I never use the wrist lock in this position. Like usually like when I get to the finish is, is the arm bar. Perfect, thank you. So we're gonna stick with the higher percentage submission there. Another student's asking, um, have you ever had your back taken while attempting this position? No, no, because um, you have you have the control here. So like uh, here, you're not really give them much of a chance to get your back because you, you have the control of this arm. Uh, I, I guess like uh, if you're trying something like this where this arm is free, then they can get your back from there, but with this one, uh, I guess even if it doesn't work and they escape, it's a long way to your back because you still like, even if you don't, it doesn't work, you still have this control right here and you can turn. Like I never have my back taken, I'm saying it's impossible, but I don't think it's very, it's, it's a high chance of people getting your back from there. Perfect, thank you. We have another question coming in from Wolverine. Um, is the bottom person doing something incorrect? Like, do they need to keep the elbows bent? Uh, so like the thing about, you know, bad positions, let's say you're in a, in a bad position, somebody's on your back, somebody's on your side control, they have knee and belly. So like, you're already in a bad position. If you do nothing about it, it's gonna be much worse. So. A lot of times when you're escaping bad positions, you're giving opportunity for other positions. It's always like, and people are like, oh, but if I leave here, I'm giving out my arm. If I, so like, yeah, but if you stay there, it's gonna be just as bad. So a lot of times when we are escaping bad positions, uh, we do give an opportunity for, for a submission, but I mean, we have to do something. So like, um, Let's say if the person on the bottom is just doing this, I mean, they're gonna stay there forever. I mean, I'm not gonna be able to get this position, but they're also just gonna stay there. So you have to do something. Um, I, I mean, like you have to push the person away. There's always like, 
things you could look for to avoid this position. But like if they just stay there and do nothing, it's it's not gonna be good for them. Perfect, thank you. I'm here. Professor, go ahead. I just wanna say also uh, a big thank you for Claudia's friend. I'm sorry, my apologize. Eu não peguei o seu nome, qual o seu nome? Milena. 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 Muito obrigado por participar aí da nossa aula aí, né? É, isso já é uma coisa que eu venho conversando com a Cláudia, por te agradeço aí e fica o convite estendido para você também. Você pode vir na bagagem com ela, do lado dela, segurando a mão dela no avião, não tem problema, pode vir para Miami, vai ser bem recebida aqui e para as nossas afiliadas também, tá bom? Obrigada, obrigada, eu que agradeço. Um prazer aí ter você aí com a gente aí, tá? Fica à vontade a hora que vocês quiserem. Óbvio, ela, claro, mas você também, por favor, fica à vontade, a hora que você quiser, pode vir aqui em Miami e as nossas afiliadas vão estar de portas abertas para vocês aí. Eu vou levar ela comigo. Por favor. So, let's see, question, because my phone falls. Uh, we have, look, uh, I have a question for one of my black belts here. Actually, my first uh, black belt, my first female black belt, uh, Kathy Jones. Uh, I'm gonna pull her in front of the camera because I cannot translate her question. Kathy, come over here. She she just finished my workout, so she's resting, but I'm dying here, but it's okay. Go ahead. Do okay, it. so my question is, let's say that you are, you're attacking the arm, but for some reason you lose it. Is there any way you can attack the other arm? Uh, let me see. Let me see. Um, I don't think that you can attack it right away because uh, usually this arm is on the floor and the elbow is touching the floor. So like here, you see the other arm is too far away for me to attack. So if I lose this position, I guess I have to try something else. It's, it's not, I don't think it's something that I could attack right away the other arm because like I said, usually the other arm has the elbow touching the floor and it's like uh, close to the body. So if I lose the other one, I guess I'd have to turn around and try something else. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure. I'm sorry. I uh, can't get my text to work, but I was going to ask, um, if you do lose the arm and you can't attack the other arm, like uh, Kathy was saying, what would be your next step? Knee in the belly? Um, where would you go? Uh, so like what was happening before attacking the arm is I was in side control and the person was pushing me away. So I think like if I do lose the arm, the person also gets to, to move away. I guess when I turn around, we would be back either in a half guard position or a full guard. So I think like, it's like you're taking a chance since you're attacking something. So I think if it doesn't work, you'd probably would have to come back from either half guard or full guard. Let me, let me see. So up here I'm trying, like, let's say if I don't take it, I would probably have to turn around and then either because my opponent is going to react. So either I would be in a full guard or a half guard position from there. Okay, cool. Does it answer your question, Dan? Um, yeah, I was wondering if she was going to invert and go back to guard or, or, or just go back to guard, but um, no, that's awesome. Great. Thank you. Obrigado. Any more questions? We have one more coming in. Uh, as your arm is sweeping over the capture of the opponent's arm, are you controlling the wrist with the other hand? Yes, you can do that. Um, it's not always necessary, but you can definitely uh, control the wrist. And as you're going, you're pulling the wrist aside. I mean, you can definitely do that. Uh, Dari, I'm sorry, I missed your question. I'm, I'm gonna scroll back up and find it. Darren and Carrie were, were asking, they said, when we were drilling, I was able to shrimp backward a little and throw my leg over the face to stop the attack. How could we prevent this? Uh, so, like I said, the position has to be very tight. So, I guess 
if you're not tight enough, that's definitely something you could do. So I guess that's something that can definitely happen if you're not tight enough here. So if I put in a, a lot of pressure as she's doing this, mm -hmm. so like if I'm here, like, cause it gets it uh, straight away. So even if she tries and, and gets the, the leg over, like here, it mm -hmm. starts hurting already. So I guess it's like uh, about how tight you make it to stop this from happening. Awesome, guys. Anybody have any more questions before, before we go? I was wondering if she switches, uh, Claudia, do you switch your uh, leg base? Like it seems like you were kind of downwards um, at first. Would you kick out to more of a case of Katami position or not? Um, or go so the, the finishing position is something like this. So I guess, yeah, you do, depending on how your initial um, side control position was, you, you might have to change. So, like if I, if I'm, because I usually already do the side control like this, but let's say you're doing something like this, and then she starts to push you away. And then, because like the, the finishing position, I don't know if you guys can see it from here, it's something like this. So that's Okay, like so you this. wouldn't kick your hip, your right hip out more. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You wouldn't, you wouldn't sit through further. To finish um, sorry. What was your question? Hold on. What, what was the question? He was asking if you can uh, sit your hips through further, but he disconnected right after that. Oh. Uh, it looks like you're back, Dan. Mm -hmm. Dan, you want to unmute yourself? We can't hear you. Well, I'm trying. There you go. We got. Would you, you kick your th hips through further versus finishing downward like that? Um. Uh, what do you mean, like kicking the hips? Yeah, that like that way. Like. Uh, no, my hips like are are touching. Uh, her hips a little bit like this. And then, like, my only concern is that, you know, like I said, very tight here on her shoulder, and my legs are like this. Okay. Awesome, guys. We're going to start the Q&A here with Professor Buyu, Professor Tom. I have a question, Claudia. Yes. All right. It's more like a personal question, okay? Mm -hmm. Before your first day, before your first class of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, yeah. uh, where you were, let's say, for instance, I'm going to give an example, right? When my two professors invited me to do Jiu-Jitsu, I was just finishing surfing and I was sitting down on the stands in Leblon Beach. And then I got tapped on my shoulder and my two professors, my masters, they told me, hey, have you ever done jujitsu? And I said, I don't know what that is. And they told me, oh, we're going to open up a school down the street. Why don't you guys come check it out? And then I didn't know who it was. I didn't have no clue. So I just got there and it was me plus five people. So where we were, like, are you like at the house and somebody call you? Hey, Claudio, let's try Brazilian jujitsu. Or you were at the at the gym or end up like at the gym has on a mat, you know, where, where you are, we were. And then, okay, you took your first class. What is the first thing that came to your mind? So I used to do judo before jujitsu. So I did three years of judo before jujitsu until I started training constantly jujitsu. But um, as I was doing judo, I took some uh, jujitsu classes here and there. 
So I remember my first jiu-jitsu class, I was probably training uh, judo for about not even a year, I think. And then uh, I, someone suggested like, okay, let's try a jiu-jitsu class. And then I went there with some of my judo friends. And then after you did your first submission, you said that, oh, wow, I found something really nice here. Is that what you thought or? What's your first thought after you finish your first jiu-jitsu class? Uh, so, like, I, I did that class, like, because I was doing judo, and obviously the judo has the newaza part, uh, yeah. this, like the ground fighting. But um, at first, like, my, my goal was just to keep training judo. So, like, um, I taught, like, um, I used to think that judo was um, easier or... I don't know, I guess because I've been training judo for like, not even a year, but some months. So I thought like, oh, I, I know this a little bit more. So that's what I prefer. It took me a while until I started doing jiu-jitsu and liking it more than judo. So like I said, I did three years of judo before I started, um, you know, training jiu-jitsu and actually like beginning to like it more. Mm. And Melina too, same thing, or you just like, okay, I'm going aboard on that too. What? Your friend behind you. Is she just said, uh, oh, I wanna, yes. Is she just do the same thing too? She used to do a judo player and then become a jujitsu player? It's a it's a funny story. Uh, she said she always wanted to do jujitsu. She always wanted, but she she never knew anything. So she was uh, she was working out at the gym and the gym offered jujitsu classes. So one day she decided like she always wanted and then one day she decided to try it. All right, thank you. <laughs> We have another question for you, Miss Claudia. They want to know how much of your judo do you incorporate in jujitsu, and what's your Nothing. favorite throw? I don't use it anymore at all. I just full guard right away. Uh, but my favorite throw when I was doing jujitsu, I used to do the seo nage with the the collar. So like, uh, so like. Because you have like, uh, usually the judo grip is this, you, you, you grab the sleeve and the collar, and then usually you do the seoinage on this, on this sleeve, but I used to do the seoinage entering on this side. So you, you took a few people a little by surprise a little bit, because they always expect you to enter this side, but I used to enter on this side. That was my favorite one. We, we have, a, I have uh, quite a few women that now train with me. Um, were there a lot of women that trained at your place when you first started or were you one of the first ones? I think that seems to matter a lot for our women now is, you know, if we can just get one to stick around and then that promotes and helps other women to join and, and so on and so forth. And because we had those one or two that stuck with us, now we have many uh, more. Um, did you find that when you were starting that there just weren't very many women? Uh, when I started training, there were other women, but um, not every class. So, like a bunch of the classes, I was the only uh, girl in training. So, like for for a long time, I would be the only girl in training. And I do think that having women uh, training brings out more women. If you have any other questions, guys, type it in the, the chat so that Amir or she can see it. 
We have a lot of thank yous for Ms. Claudia, and we also have one more question. Uh, they're asking if you can show another arm bar from site control. Uh, another arm bar from site control. I think like the, the one with the neon belly, I think it's one of the first techniques uh, shown to, to everybody. So I guess it's uh, probably one of the, uh, the first movements showed to everybody in a jiu-jitsu class, like the side control, you get me on belly, and then sometimes you have people defending with this arm, and then you, you grab it, and then you walk to the other side, catching the arm bar here. I mean, at least I see a lot of people showing us uh, basic technique. Awesome, awesome. Um, somebody's asking how old you were when you started training. Uh, when I started training jiu-jitsu, I was 21. And your favorite submission? Uh, I guess it's no surprise, it's the omoplata. I make a big deal about it. What's your current training, uh, com competition training consist of? Uh, the thing is, I have been traveling a lot on the past uh, couple of years, so I don't really have a routine. Um, I don't really have a, com a competition training. And um, I also recently uh, switched schools, and my old school never had a competition training. So I always just train the regular class and train until I got very tired and that's awesome. Uh, they're asking how long it took you to get your black belt. Seven years. Seven years. Uh, Logan is asking to play soccer with you when you come to visit Miami. Oh, no, I don't like to embarrass myself. <laughs> I'm Logan. Hi. Hi. Go, oh, sir. <laughs> when you're training do you do a lot of cross training like weights running or is it mostly just rolling uh i hate running so it's been a long time since i did that um i i think weights are important uh, i don't like it very much but uh like i said i've been traveling a lot so i don't usually have time for that uh, but uh, I'm using the quarantine time to lift weights every day. Who is your biggest inspiration in jujitsu, and how does it feel to be looked up to by so many people, both men and women, now uh, down the line in your BJJ career? So my biggest inspiration is my good friends, uh, Ilves Supena. Uh, we used to be on the same team, and um, he's, he's always been, you know, such a, a great inspiration to me. And um, what it's like being looked, uh, well, it's, I mean, it is it was obviously nice that you have people, you know, have people mm -hmm. sending me messages saying they get inspired by me, and that's like, it's like uh, it's also a lot of responsibility you know having people looking up to you and uh, it kind of like um makes you think about everything you do it's like oh there's people you know uh following me so i should uh you know probably you know follow you know like do things right but i'm, I'm always like I'm always true um I, what's the word like I'm always truthful so like I, I like I said you got to be a good example but um I don't I don't tell any lies like I don't pretend to be someone I'm not like if I have something bad to like if I have a bad op opinion on something I, I probably won't say it um or if like something that I think like it could be bad for people to know or something that, uh, you know, that I could do that would be bad for people. So I, I, like, I don't, I don't, you know, talk about those, but I'm always truthful, but obviously I always like, um, 
I try and set like a, a good example, but always like, you know, being who I am. Do you still roll with lower belts and is that beneficial for you? Yeah, of course. I, low, I roll with uh, lower belts. Uh, I like to roll like I don't I don't roll like because of the belt or age or uh, one thing I have to do though is because uh, being a female, obviously the guys are stronger. I'm not saying they are more capable, but uh, the guys are stronger. And sometimes you have like a huge guy he sees a black belt and he's like, oh, I'm just gonna smash, I'm just gonna beat her. And um, I'm a competitor, uh, I'm very injured, so I can't just roll with everybody. So sometimes like you can see uh, people have bad intentions in their eyes. So like I just avoid some kind of roles, but not because they're a lower belt or because it's a guy, but like sometimes you see, you know, you see, guy training with somebody and like just going like completely crazy and then they come to me like hey do you want to roll i'm like sorry i'm i'm gonna avoid injuries so i'm not gonna do that makes sense absolutely okay i'm gonna combine a couple of questions here uh how much time do you recommend for workout exercise each day and do you work out every day uh Honestly, I'm not very good to answer that. I don't have any kind of like a formation into like um you know, working out, like, I just, uh, I think, like, it's always good to, you know, consult with a professional and, like, ask, like, uh, how much should I train? Because I know overtraining is also a thing, like, uh, people think, oh, if I just train as much as I can, that, that's what's good. It's not, like, you should train smart. So, like, um, I think it's good to, you know, ask a professional, like, hey, how much, how much time should I spend training? How much time should I spend you know, lifting weights, how much uh, should I lift? Absolutely. Uh, this question is coming from Marcia, one of our top competitors. Uh, she's saying that Buyu is always sending her videos from you. She's wondering what other women in BJJ do you admire? Um, Annette Stack. She, she's seven time world champion. She's amazing competitor, really nice person. Uh, she has amazing moves. Um, my good friend Tayani Pofidio also, um, she gets, um, you know, prejudice from people saying, oh, that she's big. But like, if you watch her fights, she's super amazing. Like she has great technique. I think it's worth for people all sizes to watch her. Um, I mean, like, I guess every person has something to show you. So like, uh, but you obviously can't just see everyone. They, no one has time for that. I think it's good, like, um, you know, see a little bit from each one and then, like, find the ones that you like the most. Like, oh, I like to do this kind of game and then watch more things. But I definitely recommend, uh, like, trying to watch Tayani and uh, Anachi, so some of the ones that I like the most. Awesome, awesome. Do you have any uh, advice for young ladies to continue training? Um, yes. Um, well, you have to be patient because uh, especially if there are not many other women for you to train with, if you have to train with the guys, it can be very frustrating. Sometimes you don't know, like, uh, sometimes you don't know if the guy just lets you do it. Sometimes you don't know if you couldn't do it because it's a guy and the strength difference. So. Sometimes you have to learn to be patient and uh, you have to understand also that the learning curve is not like this. Some days it's gonna be bad, some days you're gonna learn, some days you're gonna, so you have to be patient and wait. Uh, a lot of times people think, oh, I'm not learning, but you are, like people from the outside can see that you're learning. So you gotta be patient and also like, if you feel, uh, you know, that some trainings are not good for you. Like either someone is using too much force, somebody's hurting you. I think you always should be honest and have an open conversation with your coach. I'm like, coach, this is happening. Uh, can can you advise uh, advise me? What what should I do? Awesome. Uh, we have a question from one of our black belts, James Caro. Uh, he's asking, in addition to training, do you also instruct? And if so, how do you balance the, the different requirements, teaching and training? Uh, well, 
I don't have like a regular class. I do lots of seminars and uh, I usually travel a lot for those seminars. So like I've been um, like just recently before all this pandemic, I was uh, around Europe teaching. It's very hard to keep doing both. Like uh, I, I didn't really get much time for training when I was doing the seminars. It's, uh, I mean, it's something you can do, but like, um, you gotta, you know, know how to balance things out. I still don't know it, I'm still learning, but um, it's hard. I mean, when you start teaching, it's hard to train on the same level you were training before. Absolutely. A follow-up question, you mentioned plateaus earlier when you were giving advice for the young ladies. Um, somebody's wondering, how do you fight a plateau? When you reach a plateau, how do you break through that? Wait, uh, sorry, what's a plateau? Uh, where you, you're, you're training, uh, your progress levels out, where you're not seeing big improvements. Uh, I don't think that that's something you can like, uh, because I remember one time when I was a purple belt, I remember this day when I talked to myself, I'm like, this is just as good as I'm ever be. I'm not going to be any better than this. I don't remember why, but I remember thinking this. Uh, I obviously got better after that, but I don't think it's, it's something you can do. Uh, it's just like, like I said, you got to be patient. So you got to keep showing up to class and then eventually, you know, break into, I don't think that's something like, oh, I reached this level. What do I do? Um, I don't know. It, like I said, it happened to me that the thing with the purple belt, but I just kept training and then got evolving. Awesome. There are so many. Professor Amir. Go ahead, Professor. Does it, uh, I'm sorry, because I can't see the chat. Uh, does that, anybody that has any other questions? That was all the questions. There was a lot of thank you messages, a lot of thank you messages. Everybody's very grateful. They love the class. Thank you so much. Yeah, I just want to get their books. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, uh, first of all, Professor Amir, Professor Tom, thank you for putting this thing together. I just want to say, Claudia, uh, really 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 grateful for you accept the invitation i'm very grateful for that um and i think um i want to get one of your phrases you know uh, you have to always be true to yourself to your students and uh it jiu is a long journey uh i make a lot of friends you are one of them and just on the ch this chats today we have almost 70 73 people i think from Brazil, we have a couple of friends from Brazil that watch the chat. Miami, Colorado, San Francisco, Philadelphia, and Michigan. So putting all those six places together to be able to be here, I just wanna say every single one that participate on the chat, thank you for taking your time and be here. And for you, Claudia and Melina, your friend, muito obrigado, thank you very much. Muito obrigado mesmo, de coração.